Ever heard of a baller so wealthy he could buy the sun? Forget it, that's small potatoes. Forget boring billionaire stereotypes. Today's cartoon story joke cracks the code on how a pint-sized prodigy became a gazillionaire. Spoiler alert, it involves lemonade, questionable ingredients, and a stockbroker with a burnt tongue. Buckle up for a hilarious history lesson that proves size isn't everything, especially when it comes to hustling. Buckle up for some crazy rich history. Dive back in time and forget everything you think you know about billionaires. Mansa Musa of Mali rewrites the rule book on wealth. We're talking oceans of gold, enough to make a dragon faint. But Mansa Musa wasn't your average treasure hoarder. This history buff is about to take you on a wild ride, filled with flashy fashion choices, a truly unforgettable pilgrimage, and maybe, just maybe, a sprinkle of accidental economic chaos. Get ready to meet the OG King of Bling. Mansa Musa, the not-so-secret show-off, who accidentally sparked a fashion trend and maybe crashed an economy. But Mansa Musa wasn't just about hoarding riches. He was a flashy fellow with a flair for the dramatic and a serious case of wanderlust, or maybe just a desperate need to escape his nagging mother-in-law. Now, the details of Mansa Musa's rise to power are a bit murky. Some say he was the rightful heir, Others whisper palace intrigue and a conveniently timed exploration voyage by his predecessor. Let's just say Mansa Musa wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty, although with all that gold, they were probably more like sparkling, slightly greasy hands. One thing's for sure, Mansa Musa wasn't content to just sit on his throne and count his gold nuggets. He had a vision, a dream, to make the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca the most epic, bedazzled event the world had ever seen. Imagine a Beyonce concert meets a Kardashian wedding, meets a royal procession, all fueled by enough gold to blind a dragon. Mansa Musa rolled up to Mecca with an entourage that would make Jay-Z blush. We're talking 60,000 dudes rocking matching brocade and Persian silk. Talk about a coordinated outfit. Not to mention 12,000 slaves each carrying four pounds of gold because who needs snacks when you can have walking treasure chests? And let's not forget the 80 camels laden with even more gold, enough to make a Bedouin faint. But Mansa Musa wasn't just about the bling, he was also about the Benjamins, well, dinars in this case. He handed out gold like it was candy, showering every city and person he met with his sparkly generosity. It got to the point where the price of gold actually plummeted in Egypt, oops, Maybe Mansa Musa should have consulted an economist before his shopping spree. Now, some say his generosity was legendary. Others whisper he accidentally crashed an economy. But one thing's for sure, Mansa Musa put Mali on the map. Literally, cartographers were scrambling to update their scrolls after his gold-dusted pilgrimage. Back home, Mansa Musa wasn't done dazzling the world. He built magnificent mosques, universities that attracted scholars from all over and a palace so opulent it would make Liberace jealous. He even brought back the hottest fashion trends from Cairo. Think flowing silks and bejeweled turbans, because who wants to be caught looking basic in the afterlife? Sure, there are some whispers about Mansa Musa running out of cash on his way back from Mecca. Turns out even the richest guy in history can't buy everything with gold. But hey, he had a good run, and his legacy? Well, it's as shiny and enduring as a solid gold bar. So, the next time you hear about some billionaire showing off their wealth, remember Mansa Musa, the original king of bling. He may have been a bit of a show-off, but hey, the man knew how to throw a party and maybe accidentally crash an economy or two. All right, all right. Ditch the dusty textbooks and those snoozy biographies of boring billionaires. We're throwing some shade on those guys today. Let's start with the real deal. The joke. A stockbroker walks past a kid selling lemonade. Hey, mister, you want some lemonade? A little girl calls to him. The stockbroker is just getting out of his brand new BMW in a nice tailored suit. He was about to walk past when he a double take at the sign that says, Lemonade 50. Your sign is wrong, kid. I think you mean 50 cents. The little girl shakes her head. 
Nope. 50 bucks, mister. I need the money for space camp. The stockbroker pauses for a minute because he appreciates a good hustle, but clearly this kid is going about it the wrong way. Look, sweetie, I know you're trying to make money, but you must charge what people are willing to pay. No one is going to pay that much for a tiny cup of lemonade. Now what do you think is a fair price? The little girl beams and says, 50 bucks, mister. The stockbroker gives a little sigh and shakes his head. Okay, I'm gonna pass. You, see? You can't make a profit when no one pay your price. Now do you have anything else for sale? Homemade brownies, 50 cents? The stockbroker winces in frustration. Okay, look, I studied economics at Harvard, and I got my MBA from Wharton, so I'm going to teach you a little about business, okay? Now each of your little cups of lemonade probably costs you about 50 cents, including the margin cost of your stand. He takes out a dollar. I'll pay you 10 times that much because I want to help you understand about markup. The little girl shakes her head and smiles. No thanks, mister. 50 bucks, please. You know what? I give up. Take this dollar, and I'm going to buy two of your brownies. I know you're losing money on them, and I'm not going to buy a single cup of your overpriced lemonade. I'm trying to be nice and teach you about business, but I guess this is the only way for you to learn a lesson. Okay. The girl takes the dollar and puts 10 brownies on a plate. Just to make the point, the stockbroker decides to eat one of the brownies right in front of her. Suddenly, he begins coughing and gagging uncontrollably. Oh my gosh, what is... What did you put in these? She grins happily and says, It's my special recipe. Eggs, flour, butter, cocoa, sawdust, and goat pellets. This is horrible. I have to get this taste out of my mouth. The little girl takes out a jar full of $50 bills, cocks her head to the side, and says through a beaming grin, You want some lemonade? <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.